What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Ask Assist P. Uh, so the point of the show is for me to talk to people who are trying to break into cyber or who are early in their journey in, uh, into cybersecurity. Uh, this is a companion to our uh, The Other Side of the Fire- Firewall podcast, where we uh, uh, highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. Uh, so please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh my uh my co-host for uh for this uh this interview uh mr uh, arthur Pryor. how you doing i'm doing all right thanks for having me yeah definitely so uh i, I reached out this week so uh just to to see if uh, anybody wanted to be on so uh a little bit behind the scenes we're recording this one danger close to thursday so it should go up in time but if not then uh, it, it'll it'll get there when it gets there. But uh, I, I definitely uh, like that you reach out to me. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good uh, conversation, and uh, you know we'll we'll post it as soon as we can. So, uh, what is your uh, experience like? What uh what did you study? Uh, where are you coming from? Like all that good background stuff. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, I went to Florida State University, Go Knowles, okay. you know, um, and I actually majored in statistics. You know, I've always been really good at math. That, that's sort of been my thing. Um, you know, after I graduated, I got into the analytics space. So, you know, just working with data, doing a lot of uh, modeling, predictive analytics. Um, I was actually an actuary for, for a number of years. Um, and that was pretty neat. You know, I got to do a lot of like real world application of the things I learned in college. So I was actually making regression models. I was actually doing like Monte Carlo sim- simulation, all that cool stuff. It was pretty neat. But um, really, I, I just I came to realize that math was something that I was really good at, but it wasn't something that I necessarily enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I just I got really bored with the work, you know. And I, I really started looking for a change of pace. Um, so, you know, when it came time to choose my major when I was in college, you know, I, I really did have a strong inclination for cybersecurity, um, considering doing a computer science route. But ultimately, I chose the math, which you know, now I'm kind of, you know, trying to explore this whole cybersecurity thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm based out of D.C. now. I hear this is like the cyber metro. So. Uh, you know, like I said, looking for that change of pace, actually enrolled in a cybersecurity boot camp, and I'm doing that now, uh, scheduled to be done in March, um, to try to help me break into the field. No, that's what's up. Uh, so yeah, so, well, I'm not currently in Florida, right? So I'm overseas, but that's where my, uh, my family, uh, lives nowadays. So, uh, I definitely can, uh, appreciate that. And there's great opportunities for cyber there as well, but like, yeah, like you said, you're definitely uh, in one of the uh, the major hubs when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, so once once you get your foot in the door, man, I, I don't think you'll have any issues. To be honest with you, it just depends on what path you want to choose, right? So uh, do you have any inclinations of kind of where you want to head when it comes to cybersecurity? Yes. Yeah, so, so that's that's actually one of the the main things I wanted to get some feedback on because um, I do have some areas that I'm interested in, you know, but I really like I'd like to leverage my previous experience in order to propel me into the world, you know? So are there any areas of cyber that you think my background would lend itself to? So analytics in general uh, uh, fits into a lot of pieces of cyber, whether it goes into um, risk management uh, or uh, uh, parts of uh, auditing logs, digital forensics, uh like you you have the keys to the kingdom when it comes to uh uh more comprehensive cyber right so like i'm I'm not a math dude like i was a computer science major a long time ago uh and i hit my cap I hit my ceiling <laughs> so I, I had to pivot hard off of that one uh and i, I still do fine when it comes to cyber security so uh, but there's certain jobs where i'm just like mm, it's not really for me like uh uh again uh, when it comes to using data science in cybersecurity, machine learning, AI, things of that nature, like I think your math background would definitely help you out. Um, but it's hard to tell you where to start. Um, so you're going through the boot camp. Uh, I'm sure uh, part of the boot camp is going to be like Security Plus, um, 
maybe uh, CEH, if, if they go into the pen testing side or CYSA. Um, uh, there's a few other routes that could take you. Um, do you know exactly, like, what uh, what does it culminate to? Like, where are they trying to get you in into cybersecurity? Yeah, so, you know, I just started. Like, I, I've literally been in a boot camp for a week. So I'm okay. still trying to, you know, see where, where they're taking us. You know, it's going to be done in March. It's, you know, really all immersive. Um, so the idea is at the end of the boot camp, we'll get that security plus certification. But okay. I'm, I'm really trying to get ahead of the curve, honestly. So I already started for it. I'm going to sit for it next month is my goal. Okay. You know? um, and I've really been looking at that that pen testing route, to be honest. Because, um, you know, that's like, that's the glamour. That's the, the glory everybody wants to, like, that's actually what a hacker is, you know. So right. you know, I've been looking at that you know, CompTIA, uh, Pen Test Plus certification, stuff like that. Um, but I guess one of the things, so I've been looking at a lot of pen testing jobs on Indeed and whatnot, and all of them are like eight years of experience, 10 years of experience. So right. I don't, it doesn't really seem to me like those are entry-level roles. So, I, you know, like what sort of job should I start out in, in order to maybe transition into a pen testing role? So I, I usually uh, always point towards the, uh, the the help desk, but in in your case, it's not that it wouldn't be fitting, but you you kind of you're not looking at potentially working really hard on on uh, hardware. Like it seems like with your background, it'd be more of the software side of the house um, that you would want to 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 be more exactly. invested in. Uh, in, in my opinion, um, again, like you learn you learn a lot when it comes to when you touch equipment and what have you, but. Uh, with the analytics and your math skills and your degree and what have you in, in mathematics, statistics, uh, I would say you, you may want to go the route of um, trying to obviously finish your security plus. I, I think that's always a good entry level certification because it gives you a broad uh, view of cybersecurity, right? And then from there, so like you said, pen, pen testing is kind of a leap. Like I, I, I've seen where people are getting hired uh, with entry level, but like you said, a lot of advertisements are asking for five years, six years, seven years, like ridiculous numbers. Uh, yes, like for a skilled season pen tester who's going to, you know, lead teams, but not for entry level. Like uh, like I tell everybody, like if if the ad is for entry level, uh, I would still apply, like, and and try to showcase your talent when it comes to the interview. But in your case, uh, you may want to lean towards looking into um, uh, forensics or um, trying to see if there's a SOC. Uh, there, there's probably a ton of them, like um, uh, security, opera, opera, well, security operations centers uh, in your area to see if they have entry-level positions where you're looking at logs, you're, you're pulling statistics, um, things of that nature. So uh, like I tell a lot of people, uh, a good starting place is to go to LinkedIn, where uh, where you reached uh, out to me, going to jobs, putting your zip code and kind of what you're you're looking for. Like type in Security Plus, type in uh, uh, analytics, things of that nature, and you'll see, uh, especially in your area, hundreds of jobs will pop up. And then it's just a matter of finding one that has realistic uh, expectations for an entry level uh, position. And then it's the networking, right? So again, like you're you're on LinkedIn, uh, it's probably as well as other social. Uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Social pages uh, to to build your network. Definitely find people in DC. Like I'm sure that there's a a, a BCA, like a Black uh, Blacks and uh, Cyber Association, uh, or um, uh, people of color in IT, or there's a chapter somewhere nearby. And I would definitely hook up with them and and start picking their brain because that that's going to get you your foot in the door. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like that that's cool from the technical perspective. But, you know, also what I'm really looking, I guess, to get from you is like insight into how you feel about the field, you know? Like, what do you like about working in cyber? What don't you like about working in cyber? How'd you get into the field? Like, stuff like that. Tell me a little bit of, of your okay. story. So I came from the IT side. So uh, by trade, I'm a network guy. Uh, the Air Force taught me how to uh, build networks uh, and, and secure them. And then I started getting to the security side from there. Um, uh, it's, it's more of a passion. So I, I get to do a little bit of it. Uh, what, I, what, I, what I currently do, uh, 
but I, I crave more, right? Uh, so when I do eventually transition to the uh, private sector, I want to definitely uh, pursue cyber over IT. Uh, and the difference being, right, IT, I'm, I'm building the network. I'm defending that network. But when it comes to cyber, um, it's all encompassing with uh, security as well as uh, protecting the business, right? Either I'm protecting the, the people who are uh, using the business, so I'm protecting their, their information or uh, I'm protecting their um, their credit card numbers, their personal identifiable information, or I'm protecting the company, making sure they stay within their framework. Uh, so I'm kind of in the air of what I want to do, whether it be um, to go into, I'm really interested uh, in PCI DSS, so payment card uh, industry, like uh, working for a bank or something of that nature. But uh, I'm also interested in forensics uh, and they're, they're, they're not the same. <laughs> like there's two, like cyber is so vast, right? And these are different branches. Like they they all have a root, but they, they go into different frameworks and what have you. So that I'm undecided on, but what, what keeps me going uh, is I learn something new all the time. Like I'm, I'm real big in education. Like I said, I was a career science major to begin with, uh, uh, fascinated by it, but I had a, a ceiling in math, which I feel as though I could have uh, gotten over it, but it would have took me years, man. Like I just, I, for me, math is just not my strong point, but I, I have uh, uh, a junior. Uh, he is a math whiz. I'm just like, you get that from your mom. You didn't get that from me. <laughs> so I can't even help you with your homework. Um, but I'm always learning something new. Like uh, every week we, we go over topics uh, on, on Monday and Tuesday. We have a discussion on Wednesday. And in those topics, I always get to see uh, what bad guys can do with cyber like when you have free free reign you have no restrictions except for going to jail uh and you have an interest in doing damage it's just very creative i'm just like i want to be the person to protect you from that like i want to figure this out before they figure it out like i want to close these these loopholes and stop these breaches before they happen and that fascinates me because every week there's something new they find out a new way to uh to to attack people um and then you had a third question yeah, yeah. So, you know, that was definitely the good, but, you know, I want to know the bad, like the nitty gritty. Like, you know, I, I get cyber is great. You learn everything, mm-hmm. all that cool stuff. What is, what would you say is the worst part of your job, you know? I, I would say uh, it's like everybody says, oh, gatekeepers, gatekeepers are terrible, and yada, yada, yada. It's that it's, it's not new. Cyber's been around for decades, right? So, I, I've been doing it for uh, over a decade now. Like I was, I was IT for uh, a decade. I've been doing cyber for almost a decade. Like it's, it was, it's existed before I even knew what it was, before I knew what cybersecurity was. Um, but you have a lot of people who are getting in and trying to shut the doors and it, it baffles me, right? Cause there's so many open positions. Like the industry needs more people, but like you're seeing ads where like, yeah, we want eight years for entry level position. Where are you going to find that person at? Like that person doesn't exist. So it's, it's, it's that it's, I don't know. I, I, I want to say them, like you keep, you point at fingers at people that you don't even know, you don't even see them, but it feels as though sometimes the, the industry um, doesn't onboard people very well. And that, that's kind of what this podcast is for, right? Like uh, the other side, I'm talking to people who are already in the industry, like, Hey, you can be like these people. Cause we make up such a small percentage of uh of cyber like eight, some say seven some say nine percent um and we're like we need more people we need more people but then at the same time you're we're deterring people from coming in like somebody goes out their way to pursue something that they they think is is cool and we don't necessarily ignite that spark because we, we we stop you from even getting your foot in the door so that part i don't like uh the the job is the job right like you just have to find what you like and, and again, there's so many different things you can do. I can't even figure out which one I want to pursue the most. So there's going to be something in cyber that's going to interest you, something that you want to pursue. Like, it's just the hurdles that you sometimes run into. That part, I, I do not like. Because it was the same thing in IT. Like, I, IT, you start getting good at it and whatnot. And you have people who are just like, yeah, well, you don't have enough experience. Like, well, I got a decade of experience. You're like, well, I've been doing this for 30 years. But like, that's nice. <laughs> like like i'm learning as you're trying as you're learning like you still have to keep up things are always changing people like i said people are using cyber in in different and fascinating ways every day so there's always something new and there's so many vacancies like they're, they're screaming for people gotcha so what do you think i can do to 
you know, better qualify myself to fill these vacancies. I know they're out there, but like, how do I set myself apart from Joe Schmo, who's also applying for the same position? So it, it comes to what you're bringing to the table. So when we talk to uh, Gabe Davis from CISA, he says that he works with an office full of people who don't necessarily have cyber degrees. Like they are in cyber, but they're bringing their their law degree to cyber. They're bringing their uh, uh, math degree to cyber. They're bringing their engineering and something totally different, software development, or it could even be just like hardcore, like I build things, engineering, but they're bringing it to cyber. So it's, it's your thought process. So like for you, bringing your, your statistics and analytics separates you. You're not just, um, I see a lot of, and it's not bad, but I see a lot of MBAs jumping into cyber uh, because ultimately cyber protects a business. So like they have that leg up on somebody like me, like my degree is in uh, uh, cybersecurity information insurance was good, uh, but my undergrad was in psychology. So like, I think that that's even bigger separator, right? Like I'm bringing like the human side to cybersecurity. Like I can try to get in the heads of the people who are attacking you uh, just off social dynamics, socioeconomic status, things of that nature I can bring to the table. I think that's what's gonna uh, separate us and I, I think that people who are just coming in with just pure degrees with uh, uh, not just not lack of experience, but like they're just coming right through the pipeline. I, I don't think that they bring as much to bear as someone like you or myself who has a diverse background. So I think that gives you the leg up. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So I guess um, another thing I've really been having trouble, I guess, figuring out Um there's not really like a set career ladder in cyber. Like, you know, I get entry level stuff, you stock right. analysts, whatever. But like, you know, as a person's career develops, like, you know, what are some of the job titles you might hold as you move up the ranks to like, I don't know, let's say becoming a chief information officer. Right. So uh, it, it it typically, like from what I've seen, uh, it depends on, like you said, they, are you going to work in a SOC? Then it's different tiers to that, right? The same thing if you worked in IT, you'd be a tier one, two, or three uh, engineer of whatever you do. Uh, so it kind of pretty much holds true, whether you're going to cloud or you're going to something else, you'll have those different tiers. And then once you get out of that tier grouping, uh, you'll be a manager or supervisor or director of some sort. Uh, and then you can be um, uh like Shannon is in ISSO, you have ISSMs. Uh, when we had uh, Aisha Hollins on, she hosts the title of of uh, CISO. So like she is like right there in the C-suite. Um, so that's that's kind of the the, the moving up. Um, and then, like you said, you have your your uh, chief technology officer and things of that nature uh, above that. Usually, those people are more on the business side of the uh, the house. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So. I know you got this um, CI SSP certification, right? Um, right. So what other certifications do you have and what certifications would you recommend? Uh, gotcha. So for me, because I came from the IT side, so uh, I have my uh, Net Plus, my Security Plus, uh, my CCNA, so Cisco, um, uh, for switching and routing and what have you. Um, I also hold a CEH um, that I grabbed when I was pursuing my uh, my master's. Um, I, like you said, I have my, my CISP, um, and now I'm looking at trying to get um, uh, some cloud certs, because ultimately I want to be able to secure the cloud as well. That's the future. Um, like, no, no matter how, where you turn, like, like, I'm used to having on-premise stuff, but even... Uh, in the military, we're moving to uh, the cloud uh, at lightning speed. So that, that is, it, it's efficient. It saves money. It's it's uh, it, it's less of, less of a hassle if you have the money to uh, to do so. So I, I definitely want to get there. Uh, I would say, uh, find once you find your your passion, pursue things in that. But I, I would say that's a foundation. Security Plus, right? I guess your foot in the door. Uh, um, if you want to go the pen testing route your CEHs, your CHFIs, uh, hold decent weight, but I think like CYSA plus, um, and uh, I'm trying to think of another one. Uh, is it CROC, CRIS? Um, I cannot remember off the top of my head. C-R-I-S, 
I believe I don't have it. So as you see, I'm struggling, but uh, there are certain certain ones that you might want to look at on the uh, I, I side. There's definitely some some really great certs on the uh, GX side. So GX has uh, GCFA uh, was one that I have the, the stack of books. So this is this is a, a a passion project in itself right here. As you can see, there's five volumes of books right here. Uh, I have not taken it yet. So <laughs> I'm still I'm still flipping through the books. Uh, but like that's one I'm thinking about um because it it, it definitely gets you into uh sifting through logs, uh looking at malware, uh trying to figure out how it works, reverse engineering it, things of that nature, like uh working on things in sandboxes. Um but uh I would say figure out kind of what you're interested in before you just start taking a bunch of certifications. Uh, Cause I mean, education is great. You learn something new, but uh, if you're like me, now you'll have stacks of books all over your, your, uh, your apartment. You be like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that one. Like that one's coming up. Uh, but I have my, my IT search cause I, I was IT for uh, the, the majority of my, my air force career. And now I'm getting my, uh, my cyber certs. Oh, and PMP. So if you're into project management, I've, I have my PMP as well. I think that's amazing. Like PMP, just the, the mindset of a, uh, a project manager. Like, I, th- I think that helps you uh, not only in uh, help with like doing your own life tasks, but uh, if you decide to go into business, it gives you a leg up when it, when it comes to cradle to grave project management. Gotcha. So I guess a, a big thing for me, um, you know, like I said, I'm a career changer and I worked in an analytics for seven years. So I already knew changing careers. I was going to have to take a pay cut. That's kind of like I've internalized it. This is what it is. But I'm really trying to get a sense like, you know, what kind of money are we talking for these entry level positions, you know? So like you're, you're in an area, like your area throws the, the, the charts off because it's very expensive to live there and they're going to pay you more. Right. So, uh, I know people who I worked with when I was in Virginia that moved to DC and they were making twice as much, but it was still hurting them, their pockets. <laughs> like they had to, I, I got a friend who he lives in West Virginia. So he, he, uh, he, tra- he, he commutes every day, but he oh. found some place that his money is, is, is worth a lot. Right. Yeah. But if you're trying to live anywhere inside DC, it's like, oh, it's kind of tight. Um, on average, like if you go the, um, if you go entry level, uh, I, it can it can range from 40 to 60, um, depending on your area. Like for you, that's inflated. It'll be, it could be, it could be 60 to 80, 70 to 90. It don't matter. Like y'all, y'all ball out of control over there in DC. Okay. Okay. So like, like the equivalent, like if you live somewhere that was normal, <laughs> it would be some, somewhere around uh 40 to 60 but then once you get your foot in the door man like there's so many there's so many uh uh vacancies like in your area like i know you have scissors trying to hire more people you have uh um dhs is trying to hire more people and there with that comes a lot more pay um just with your security plus and experience um it, it, it pays pretty well so it's it's kind of a grab bag, but once you get into uh, management, that's when you start to break six figures. Uh, but I, I even I take that back. Like I, I know people who are um, they're not managing anybody. Like they literally go go to work and do their job, and they're making one hundred and twenty. So it, it really depends on what path you take. Uh, and then for you, it's um, building your network. Like there's a ton of jobs in DC that are paying stupid money. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of, of figuring out where they're at uh, because uh, like I said, like all the federal agencies are, are paying good money. Like if you type in 8570, like once you get your security plus uh, 8570 is a um, uh, like a, a tiering of certifications to work for the federal government. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I knew people when I was in uh, Virginia that were, they came in making uh, 60 to 70 for uh uh, tier two, tier three type work. Um, and, but then they left us and they went up to DC to make, you know, uh, 25%, 50% more. So, so the money is there, but it, it's, it's a matter. I, you, you have to be patient with getting into one of these entry level jobs, but once you're in, you have the experience, right? 
but it's it's like the memes where you had the little kids in hard hats and road construction uh gear like oh yeah we need 20 years of experience like well, when, I, when i start when i was five like <laughs> it doesn't make no sense uh but it's just being patient just just networking um because again there's so many vacancies but i i think uh a, a a, a little bit more misfortune, like not to target recruiters, but a lot of them don't have the IT knowledge. So they're just going, they're regurgitating other ads. Uh, you have people in HR departments who aren't necessarily techie and they'll like, we want, um, not necessarily just experience, but we want this degree, but with that degree, you don't have the necessarily the experience, right? Cause like you're just now graduating with that degree, as opposed to I'll take somebody who has experience over, uh, a, a degree um, when it comes to certain positions. Um, so we always have this fight where it's like, which was more important uh, experience certifications or degrees? Well, they're all important, but what trumps all of them experience, how do you get the experience? You got to get your foot in the door. You got to keep applying and keep trying to network and whatnot. And uh, what usually piques people interest is your passion plus certifications. Like, yeah, I have not, been in the field for five years, but I'm very passionate. I've been studying on my own. I built my lab. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm doing these things. I can talk the talk. Now you just have to let me operate, whatever it is. Um, and that's usually how a lot of people break in as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, yeah, so I've been thinking about that too a lot. Um, and like I said, with the whole pen testing thing, that, that's something that really strikes my interest. But the thing about pen testing is you can't really get experience like beforehand. You know, like anything that you do with pen testing is highly illegal until you're actually a pen tester. But you know, I've been on Hack the Box, you know, I'm doing all the try hack me, right. all of that stuff, like trying to get, you know, as much experience as I can experience, like in a sandbox right. situation. But I, I guess how valuable do you think that would be to potential employers? Or are they just like, I, I, I don't think, care about that? No, 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 absolutely not. Like labbing is... Like you said, it's not it's it's not you attacking a company and finding their uh, open ports and trying to social network to grab you know passwords and whatnot because that's yeah. very Ill- illegal. <laughs> that will get you hemmed up. But it, what do you do when you can't do you know uh, real life work? You 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 lab. You get the experience. I think that stuff really does stand out. Like especially if it's if it, if you're showing that you have passion and doing it. Like LinkedIn's the living resume. Like if you're you know posting like oh, you know I've been doing this. I'm learning that. I, I built this, I, I made these virtual machines so I can try to hack that. Like uh, when, cause when it came to switching the routing, right? Like um, uh, a lot of me trying to get my CCNA was a lab environment, whether it be GNS3 or what have you. Uh, and then it was me buying really cheap gear. Like uh, I, um, or actually I didn't even buy it. So I, at work, they had a, a couple of um, eight port POE switches, um, and I was just like, hey, can I sign those out with a handful of internet cables? And I just built a network from there. Just kept building it, taking it down, building it, taking it down, breaking it. Um, because how else, how else do I get the experience? So it's the same thing when it comes to uh, pen testing and things of that nature. Like you lab it up, but it's you marketing yourself. It's you talking to other people like, hey, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm doing this. What are you doing? I'm doing that you know, how'd you get here? Like asking me questions. I, I think you can use this on your page to to showcase your your interest and your passion but don't just reach out to me like find somebody who's actually in that industry like find a pen tester like hey like how'd you get started like what what uh what products did you use and then also like uh hey you got any jobs <laughs> any is there any openings in your company yeah i get you all right um so i guess really my last question um and you know i hear a lot of mixed reviews on this but you know, how much programming do you do? Because, you know, I feel like some people do a whole bunch. That's all they do is write Python scripts. Some people, not so right. much. So how much do you do? How valuable do you think it is? So learning any language uh, for programming uh, is, is good. I, I, computer science dropout, right? And so uh, I, I know a little bit of Python. I don't use it on a regular basis. Like I, I use it because I'm interested in it, not because I have to use it for my job. Uh, there's a little bit of automation. If you go into the automation side, like if I were to pursue my CCMP and above, uh, I would definitely start to pick up scripting languages just because automation is uh, pretty important. But 
if that's what you want to do, like if you want to go into software, if you want to go into software design, if you want to go into protecting software, then I would definitely say pick up a, a, a language. Uh, I don't think it's something you have to necessarily focus on if you're going into uh, into pen testing, to my knowledge. Like I, I definitely would have to ask a pen tester because that's that's just not my my wheelhouse. And but when I pursued my uh, C, CEH, my CHFI, and then when I was looking at uh, GCFA, there's no no programming involved. It was sure. do I understand what logs look like? Do I understand what malware looks like? Registry keys, things of that nature. Like um, do I, can I find a threat before it is uh, actual actualized? Not anything to do with programming per se. But it, it doesn't doesn't hurt. I'm just saying, like, I don't I don't think it's something that you necessarily have to key into until you find a position that's asking for that. Then you're like, oh, okay, I see, like, where I want to go requires me to learn Python or something else. Then I'll pursue it. But just general, like, in an interview, whip out some Python knowledge. No. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, cool. Yeah, I think um, those are all the questions I have prepared. So I definitely appreciate you, like I said, taking the time to speak with me. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, uh, it, I would definitely hit up like uh, I know like uh, Matisha Harper. So Tish was on. She's uh, uh, pursuing pen testing. I, I see her on Twitter and LinkedIn uh, doing the same thing, like hack, hack the box, try to hack me, things of that nature. She's like networking with people. She's asking those questions. I, I would say you just need to do the uh, the same thing in the realm that you, you're thinking about going uh into and i think that that definitely does help and it gives you the the um the awareness in your sector um so i, I definitely wouldn't stop doing that like you're, you're in such a good area i'm just like man in in dc you're you're definitely going to be able to uh network and find someone uh who's going to be like yeah come 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 work with us get your foot in the door uh we'll even pay for some of your training like i, I don't think that's going to be a problem for you um, especially after you finish your your, your boot camp, um, I think that'll, that'll definitely hold uh, great weight. I'm just like I'm pretty excited for you just on the area alone. Like that that whole area is just, just booming. Same same like Florida is, Florida is too, but not like DC. Like DC has private sector government contracts. Like uh, it's 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 a hot spot right now. So music to my ears. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you, you, you definitely be all right. Like I said, like once you get your security plus, I would definitely look into because uh, uh, working for the federal government, like they, they, a lot of these contracts are paying for uh, further training because it it's just nets them more money, right? Like not only do I have a guy who has a security plus, but uh, he also is moving up the ladder and I, they're going to pay our contract that much more money. So we'll pay him more money to, yeah, uh, yeah. to keep him around. You actually bring up a, an interesting topic. So you know, I've seen a lot of government work for sure. So what do you think is the better route to go? Like, should I start out government, or private sector? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are the pros and cons of each? So uh, from what I've seen, uh, when it comes to government contracts, um, the the pay is great. There's some risk. So the the, the risk being like, when was that con- when did that contract start? Because usually they have uh, they have goals while they're up. So if your if your contract is not fulfilling its goals, it can be canceled. But they all have expiration dates, and um, sometimes they renew, sometimes they don't. So I've had friends who've had three or four different jobs because they'll get to the end of a contract, the contract will end, and they have to go look for more work. Um, but while they're there, they're getting paid excellent. Like I've seen, I saw one for Jacobs one time that was paying ninety thousand dollars for six months of work. You can't beat that. Yeah. But then you, you need to find a new job after six months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like that's kind of stressful. Yeah. But if you have the flexibility to to be able to hop like that, then then more power to you. But uh, if you go the government civilian route, that has more stability, but does not pay as well as contracting. So that's that's kind of the the, the give or take. Private sector, same same thing, right? So uh, depending on where you work at, it's if it's at will states. I mean, if you, it's not working out, they can just terminate you. But it just that just means you know you got to come there and and, and uh, perform your A game. So there's three different schools of thought. Which one would I choose? It, it depends on for me because I have a, a family stability. I'm going for yeah. stability over anything else. But like my my single friends on contracts, yeah, I work four different jobs. <laughs> like they pay me that much money, and I just have to you know save until I can you know what I mean. So I have like a little bubble to move on to the next contract. 
I, I don't think anything's wrong with that uh, either. It's just a little bit more too risky for my taste. Gotcha. Yeah, but I, I appreciate you reaching out, man. Like, uh, I, I'm definitely going to keep tabs on you, see what you do, because I'm, I'm interested uh, to, to see where you go, because um, it's definitely a different route um, than when we started this conversation. Like, when I was looking through your uh, LinkedIn profile, I was like, well, you can go this, you can do that. But I didn't think pen testing when I when I looked at it, not because you can't do it, because you, you obviously can, but I just... I, I was thinking more of uh, uh, analytics, data science, things of that nature. So I was like, okay, that's what's up. So I'm very interested to see, see where you're going. I, I would love to have you back on once you, you do land that job to ask you how you did it. Like, okay. So, we, you know, what, was, what, 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 what routes worked for you? You know what I mean? Like just to see if, if what, what I'm saying uh, made sense, because it could be different. Right. And then that, that helps me course correct. So that way I don't steer the audience wrong. So. Yeah, definitely. That's what's up. Yeah, you know, I'll definitely stay in touch. You know, once I land this job, I'll be back on, no problem. Okay, uh, that's what's up. Uh, so I, I'll go ahead and land this plane. So uh, thank you for uh, for those listening. Thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Pryor, for uh, for stopping by. I great, greatly appreciate your questions. It, uh, it definitely uh, keeps me on my toes and <clears throat> definitely uh, answers some of the questions that the audience may have and they just didn't reach out to ask it, right? Um, hit up the, uh, the website, www.theothersideoffirewall.com, where you can get to all the socials. You can hit me up personally, uh, uh, just like every Ask the CISP show, uh, they usually hit me up on LinkedIn at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. I'm also on, uh, Twitter, TikTok, and, uh, IG, kinda. I, I don't, I don't still understand how IG works. I think I'm too old. Uh, <laughs> and where can they find you at? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't really do much of the socials, honestly. So I got LinkedIn. Uh, that's really the only thing that I'm on. But feel free to go ahead, connect me. Okay. And I, I'll put your, your link in the description. But yeah, definitely uh, hit him up, especially if you're you're interested in, in uh, what he's trying to do, whether you have uh, questions about him in his area or if you, you know, you got a job you want to give him. That, that's also what's up. <laughs> do that as well. Um, but yeah, uh, continue to tune in. This hopefully will go up on Thursday, if not this Thursday, the next Thursday, but uh, stay tuned uh, for, for more to come. So stay safe, stay secure.